All right, this is Professor Cummings, and this is the second part to our discussion on grinding. And the last time we were here, uh, in the last video, uh, we were going over the bond. You know, the bond, we mentioned the grit, the porosity, and the bond. And we had stopped at this slide on, on the bond itself. Again, just saying what the bond material is. You know, it's used to hold the grains together. You know, it allows for the, the grain to be put together, you know, to form tools, wheels, and different types of shapes. All right. Now, again, you know, this last bit was the uh, part we left at. Um, it holds the grains, you know, it provides its shape. It gives it a specific geometry. And the bond also provides a certain amount of strength and toughness. So that's when we get into the different types of bonds. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details here, but there's at least five types here. You know, the vitrified bond, you know, which is good for resistant oils and acids. So a lot of hostile environments. You know, you have resinoid, which is more for flexibility. So a little more tough. You got reinforce. You got thermoplastic. You know, so then you have uh, rubber. So again, these are for cost. So like most things in manufacturing, you know, the bond can be selected based on uh, what your application is, you know, what your cost might be, what type of environment you're going to be working in, as well as uh, the magnitude of the job you're working at. You know, so if you have a very large job, you're going to pick one type of product. If you're having a very small, one of a kind custom job, you're going to pick a much more uh, or a very different type of product. When we think about how wheels are, are classified, a lot of it has to do with the type of bond as well as the type of grit as well as the porosity. So again, when we look at this, the grade, you know, of an abra bonded abrasive, you know, it's, it's a measurement of the, the strength of the bond. That's generally what we get to when we talk about the grade of the, of a wheel. It goes over how hard the wheel is or the bonded abrasive. It could be a wheel or other type of technology. Also, we talk about the structure of the wheel, which gives you the porosity. Now, the next one, part of the wheel, you know, I said it was the porosity, the bond, and then we got the grit. You know, the grit, you know, which is analogous to the cutting tool. You know, if we were thinking about this as, as traditional machining, it has different types of materials. And again, the material are the different types of grit materials are suitable based on what you're actually cutting. And they all have different types of uh, formulas, different types of applications. You can see we've got aluminum oxide. We actually do have CBN, cubic boron nitride, as well as diamond. So just like we have different types of cutting tools that have different expectations, different performance criteria, you also have that with, with bonding. And you think about the abrasives or with grinding. And just like with cutting tool materials, turning and milling materials for cutting tools, there's a workpiece compatibility. So in other words, certain materials don't work with certain types of uh, grinding materials. You know, just like you wouldn't use a PCD insert, polycrystalline diamond insert with a ferrous material, you also couldn't use, you know, PCD or a diamond with a ferrous material. So there are certain types of grinding materials that just don't have, that have a better compatibility issues with others. And again, this is just like, exactly like with uh, milling. So again, you've got aluminum oxide, you know, com carbon steels, you know, alloy steels, you know, silicon carbide, non-ferrous metals, you know, CBN, steels and cast iron, and then you've got diamond you know, ceramics and carbides. Now, one thing to consider when you are addressing wheels is how the wheel will wear. Now, we talked about this a little bit before where we, I had said something about a grain fracture in the last video, and I brought up this image. There's actually two other types of uh, wearing that goes on with wheels as well. You know, you can actually have a fracture at the bond itself. You'll lose the entire grain because the bond breaks. And you can also have a wear of the grain, not where it fractures, but just where it wears itself flat. And that's known as attritious wear. So attritious wear, when you think of that and you think about this image, imagine this is a wheel rotating, creating the, the chip or the swarf and leaving a ground material surface behind.
behind it in its path, attritious wear would be akin to flank wear. So just like you would have the flank of a cutting tool that would wear off and run flat up the edge, this would also have the same effect. You know, so you can have that from a physical interaction as well as a chemical. Then, of course, you've got the grain fracture, which we spoke of before. You know, this is you know the part of the friability where the new cutting edge is being exposed. You know, again, this is dependent on what type of grain you're using. So it's a function of the grain material and how aggressive you're you're cutting. And then there's the bond fracture. So again, so all the different types of bond materials we spoke of. Uh, have different abilities to hold on, you know, different types of strength. And if you pick a certain type of material, you're going to see a certain type of rate of bond wear. So you're actually going to start losing more of the wheel. In all of these cases, you're losing wheel. And that brings us to another concept called the grinding ratio. So the grinding ratio is just a different way of measuring the wear of the wheel. So it looks at the volume of the material removed versus the volume of the wheel that's worn away. So it's just a ratio between how fast the material is going away versus the amount of wheel that's that's being left behind. So you start understanding what your swarf is being made up of. It's part of you know, part of it is the wheel. Part of it is the material you're taking away. So that's another concept that I want you guys to keep in mind is this grinding ratio, as well as the three different types of, of fracture. Now more about the wheel. So we've talked about how this wheel can wear, how it's being applied. And eventually, you know, the wheel starts to wear down. You know, it's got three different ways it can wear down. Uh, and as we go through this wearing process, you're losing sharp edges. You know, if you have uh, types of attritious wear. But you can also start to affect its shape as well as its size. So we have this concept called uh, dressing the wheel. So dressing can happen to affect the attritious wear you know actually when you got a weird well there's been the crystals or the grit have been worn smooth but also with a concept called loading now loading isn't quite the same as wearing you know the wheel itself hasn't had the bond broken it's not necessarily the the grains are wearing flat through attrition or that you have grains breaking down from friability loading is when your swarf clogs the porosity. Now, I mentioned this before when I was first talking about porosity, that that is an important feature. Even though it is, you know, not a physical feature part of the, or physically a part of the wheel, it is the negative space, you know, between the grains. And it's important for it to be there, for there to be clearance, for the swarf to be flushed out, for the coolant to be taken away, as well as for the heat to be taken away. So it allows for all sorts of uh, benefit to have it. When you've got that being clogged with swarf, you've now taken away the ability for the wheel to, to do its, you know, to actually cut. So you, and also you've taken away the ability for the wheel to generate or to lose its heat. So it will start to, you know, develop heat, build up heat, and you could potentially burn your workpiece. So you have to dress your wheel to, expose new cutting edges as well as to get rid of the loading in the in the grinding wheel so this is an example of both uh, loading of a wheel over here in this corner and you can see all the the damage or the wearing that's taking place you know so particles are being streaked throughout the wheel in the porosity so you have these various tools that can be used to dress that wheel so a dressing tool can look some as aggressive as, as this where you actually have a tool with various uh, random geometries or pieces of geometry that go in and actually uh, start to take the material out of the wheel itself. Or it can actually be just one hard piece of material that goes across the surface. You know, both serve the same purpose. You're exposing new cutting surfaces. But a dress also is there to retain or regain the shape of the wheel. So you see over here in this little diagram, where you've got the uh, the grinding wheel and then you've got the diamond dressing tool that actually goes over and recontours the shape of the wheel. You can get the fl surface flat or it gets whatever contour you had originally into the surface. So this is all I'm going to do for, for this particular video. And when we come back, I'll start to look at more of the mechanics.
behind uh, grinding. So looking at things like the temperature, the cutting forces, you know, or grinding forces, uh, and thermal checking and grinding. All right. Thanks for watching.